Dear friends, in 2015, the Honorable Prime Minister, at the time of the launch of Digital India, he outlined his vision for a digital India. And what did this, did he see? Say. His words were, "I dream of a digital India, where high-speed digital highways unite the nation. 1.3 billion connected Indians drive innovation, and technology ensures citizen government interfaces incorruptible." So that is the vision that we have for our country. And today we find ourselves witnessing the transformation of this visionary dream into a tangible reality. We see the fintech revolution around us. We see the you know growth and popularity of social media around us, and we see that almost every household in the country that had some connection with technology, some connection with the digital technology. So that is what is happening nowadays. Now I am also heartened to see that we are making a lot of strides in this field. For example, there are people who might not be aware as to what has happened. in digital technologies in indian languages and as professor kamkoti mentioned that we need to know i would like to share certain things certain aspects certain facts today if you explore the list of top 10 newspapers by circulation in india 9 out of these 10 newspapers are from indian languages for example dainik bhaskar jagran rajasthan patrika दीना तंदी मलयाला मनोरमा अमर उजाला एंड सो मेनी अदर ओनली वन इंग्लिश न्यूज पेपर एक्चुअली फिगर्स इन दैट लिस्ट एंड दैट इज टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया नाउ दीज नाइन आउट ऑफ टेन न्यूज पेपर्स आर चर्निंग आउट बिलियंस ऑफ पेजेस ऑफ कॉन्टेंट एवरी ईयर इन लोकल लैंग्वेजेस राइट फ्रॉम हिंदी टू तमिल तेलुगू मलयालम बंगाली एटसेट्रा if there was no system available if there were no building blocks available for these languages they would not have been able to churn out billions of pages with that professionalism and that finesse every year so that shows to us that there is a system available in the country for our languages and technologies right if you look at other areas also other media look at electronic media top 10 i mean among the top 10 television channels 8 or 9 are from indian language space what does does it convey that the systems we use in that space to build videos to build user generated content to build audio content in local languages that is there if you look at youtube for example which are the top channels on youtube these channels are maybe carry minati t series sandeep maheshwari bhuvan bam technical guru ji and most of these are in indian languages how is it possible to be at the top of youtube ecosystem if there is no indian language technology available ultimately you need to record in your language you need to type in your language you need to create videos and for that purpose you need to be able to edit your videos and add indian language text to those those videos in maybe adobe premiere or any other application you need to write your scripts in indian languages maybe using microsoft software so all of this is there and that is very important for us to know that lots of work has already gone into this space and let me also recognize that although microsoft has done revolutionary work in this field and i come from microsoft so that that i think you can understand that i am in the know of things as to what is happening there because we started our work in indian languages in 1998 and after that you see that unicode was introduced in windows and after that i think whatever happened after that is a history once unicode became a part of uh, our daily productivity scenario lots of innovation was possible now what you see on a operating system and also on the on the cloud i would like to give a lot of credit for that to unicode encoding the development of that encoding and that is supported in microsoft ecosystem as well as apple and google ecosystem as well as many other you know technology organizations now what has happened possible because of that unicode revolution is that 
Today we can translate from one language to another. Today we speak and that gets converted into typed text. Today we scan a page, the typed page, or maybe a printed page, and that text gets converted into typed text in Unicode forms. This would not have been possible. This revolution would not have been possible had there was no Unicode. And that was introduced in 2000, year 2000 in major operating systems, beginning from Windows. So that is what has happened, and that is why we see these, these fruits of technology today. But let me double click on as to what has exactly happened in our languages, because that understanding is very important. So I divide this work in 10 different categories, 10 categories of work that has happened in Indian languages. Number one, the foundational support for Indian languages, including Unicode support, Indic text storage, Indic text display, Indic fonts, and conveniently designed keyboard layouts for Indian language users. Generally, during my demonstrations, whenever I conduct demonstrations of technology, Indian language technology, I showcase 10 different ways using which you can type on a PC in your own language. There are 10 different ways that you can use to text input in, in, your, in your PC. So look at that simplicity which is coming up. Number two, universal access. And let me you know, thank the government of India and MITE for taking lead here in universal access, in promoting universal access. But what is that? Universal access means that we should be able to use Indian languages in URLs of websites and email addresses. That is a very important aspect in terms of empowerment of Indian language users because there might be people who don't know English at all, but we cannot keep them away from this technological revolution. If you go to Microsoft Edge, which is our browser, you can, you can use Indian language URLs there in all Indian languages. If you use Microsoft Outlook, you can use Indian language addresses there, email addresses in Outlook. If you use Microsoft Exchange, you can use Indian language emails, etc. in that. If you are using Microsoft Office, and if you type an Indian language email address, for example, balindu at the rate microsoft.bharat, you will see that it will be automatically underlined in a blue color. Why? Because it, it has become a link. So those kinds, kinds of things are there. Universal access is there. It is, it is a reality today. Number three, productivity software. M many of you know that around 20 years back or so, we used to buy specific software to work in Indian languages. Now you don't, because support for Indian language is part of Office productivity software. Even if you use Microsoft Office, you can work in Indian languages. If you use Google Docs, you can go and use, uh, you, can, you can work in Indian languages. If you use any other third party, Open Office, you can work in Indian languages. So productivity software, that is number three. There also our languages are supported. I know that a lot of work is to be done, but a very robust ecosystem is already in place and let's know about that. Let's tell our students about that. Let's leverage that. Let, let, you, let us use that as a foundation for innovation. So it is very important for us to know what has already happened. Number four, Indian languages on the cloud. We can leverage Azure cloud. Because on Azure cloud, there are services which are available in local languages. And I will not go in depth over there, but let me give you a couple of examples. If you use Microsoft Bing search engine, or maybe Google search engine also, and Bing Maps, you can use these in local languages. There is nothing that stops you from you know, using your, your own language in Microsoft search engine or Microsoft Maps. Number five is localization. What is localization? Most applications and websites may have been developed keeping English as the primary language. But when these applications are introduced in any country, any, any society, it is necessary that we convert their user interface in the language of those, those people who are living in that area. For example, Windows is in English primarily, but just by two or three mouse clicks, you can convert Windows totally into Hindi. Or say Punjabi or Bengali or Tamil, you can convert Windows totally into that language. You can convert Microsoft Office into an office that has menus, messages, etc., everything in Hindi. 
or Odia, for for example. So that is localization, and that been that has been done. Why it is important? This is important from inclusion perspective. That that was just uh, you know raised by my fellow speaker. There are people who cannot speak English. There are people who don't know English, but they also have the right to work on a computer to be productive. But if Windows is totally in English, they will not be able to be productive. If Office is totally in English, they will not be able to do that. But there are just three or four clicks required to convert that user interface of Windows and Office to be able to work in your or your own language without even knowing English. So that is called localization. Number five. Number six, language utilities. You work in English language and you know that I can spell check my document in a second. And then many of us think that why this facility is not available in my language. Actually, my dear friends, it is available. It is available in Office software. You just need to go to review tab and click on language preferences and just add your language, and you will be able to check spelling in Hindi or Odia or Tamil, Telugu, Punjabi, Bengali. That is available, and that is called. the language utilities you can you can use thesaurus in microsoft office in hindi language or other languages but we don't know perhaps we don't know number 6 is artificial intelligence so in artificial intelligence i divide that into two different categories first is the fundamentals which are you know taking place in artificial intelligence so language in language you know that machine translation is now possible from microsoft i can say then that we support that in 16 languages 16 indian languages using these you can convert your text into more than 100 world languages and also between these languages so machine translation this is there now it is not just on internet like if you go to bing and then you translate it there no it is part of your day to day productivity ecosystem in microsoft word you can translate in microsoft powerpoint you can translate entire powerpoint presentation can be translated right now within seconds from english to hindi to tamil to telugu or any other indian language 16 indian languages are covered there so that is language even your browser the edge browser from microsoft that translates your entire website from one language to another the language that you use you can translate your web pages into your language so overall that is the part of language then then comes computer vision computer vision is part of indian language ecosystem today for example if you go to if you use microsoft translator you scan or take a photograph of a printed picture and you you can convert that into typed text and you can translate that into hindi also so that is also a reality let's come to another part number 3 that is speech recognition so we support 12 languages for speech from english to like you speak in hindi language and you can dictate at a very fast speed in english language you can use some other languages also so overall 12 language languages we support and then comes gestures that is part of this uh, today's uh, discussion i think some of you might have played games using kinect sometime in which you just use your hand gestures or maybe your leg gestures to kick a football which is imaginary football and actually on the screen you see that a football is kicked so these are gestures hand gestures feet gestures your your facial gestures etc we have done a lot of work in that also and i'll give you a couple of examples specifically for example handwriting recognition is part of windows today you just need to click on the task bar right click and click on enable handwriting i mean enable on screen keyboard and then you will be able to use a stylus on a computer to write in your language in your own handwriting that gets converted into typed text in hindi language so those kind of gesture based things are happening another and which is very important uh, development is that in windows we have added eye control what does that do you just need to use your eye gestures to look at the screen where a virtual keyboard arrives and whichever key you look at you know that automatically gets pressed and text gets typed in the document that you are working on so using your eyes you can you can be productive on a computer these gestures i gestures are part of windows now finally generative ai all of you perhaps know and i think professor kamkoti also mentioned that we have seen a video in which it is said that you can work on excel even without knowing excel 
that has been possible by these new age artificial intelligence uh, developments, especially generative AI. AI. The Bing AI that we have released, you can talk to Bing AI in your language, Hindi language. You can translate a website which is open in Edge browser into your language. You can ask Edge browser to summarize that website's content into your language in Hindi. It will do that. And you can also use it to create certain things, for example, to write uh, an essay or so many other things you can do. That we see, we generally uh, relate with chat GPT. So those things are also happening in this ecosystem. And finally, most important, uh, you know, among the most important tasks that we need to do is how we support people with disabilities in their own languages uh, in using technology. We know that around 15% of the world population is formed by people with disabilities. Do they don't have a right to work on computers? Do they don't have a right to work on mobile phones? Or do they don't have the right to work, leverage the cloud technology? They do. And we know that so many utilities and softwares are available for people with disabilities in English language. But what about Indian languages? So we have taken an initiative here and we have started developing assistive technology in local language for people with different kind of disabilities. For example, if you go to Microsoft OneNote, and suppose I'm a person with physical disability, I can't move my hands properly, but I want to draw something, just go to OneNote, go to draw, use your stylus, try to you know, draw there. If you can't draw a proper circle, it will automatically convert that into circle, whatever you have drawn. If you want to draw a, a rectangle, you can't do that, but just go to OneNote, try to draw it, Artificial intelligence, which is part of OneNote, will convert that you know, deformed uh, shape into a proper rectangle shape. I cannot speak in maybe a particular language. I can use, I'm a person with blindness. I cannot use keyboard. I can just go to Windows, and I can use uh, you know, dictation commands, which are part of Windows. Maybe you may like to note it down that just press Windows plus H and then a pop-up appears and you can start speaking and whatever you speak that gets typed in Windows. Remember Windows plus H, that's it. So things are that easy. These are that easy. And finally, imagine I'm, I'm probably giving a lecture somewhere. I'm also presenting somewhere. And I'm using English language. And in the audience there are people with hearing disability. They cannot hear me. Then how do I convey my, my thoughts to them? And how do they consume the content that I'm showing? I have, I mean, in PowerPoint now there is a feature and you just need to go to slideshow and click on uh, subtitles and automatically whatever I speak as a speaker, automatically subtitles are generated on the screen and people who cannot hear me, people with hearing disability, deafness, they can read those subtitles. Live caption which is part of Windows, you just switch it on. And then anybody speaking something around me, I can read that in my Windows computer. So those things are happening and we need to know about that. So that is, that is what I would like to say. I have already taken a lot of time. But I wanted everyone to know that what has actually happened in our languages from foundational uh, you know, developments to artificial intelligence and generative AI. Thank you, Balandu. Um, Lot more uh, to learn and lot more features that gets added. I think to keep in pace with what technology today offers, that skill set development is one that is going to make us more and more productive. Thank you for actually giving a very quick uh, Windows tutorials also. Right? Thank you very much. A lot of things I also learned here. Now we'll open up for question. How much time we have, madam? <laughs>